so hi guys, my name is Ivan Ruzovic. I'm a JavaScript. Is it on? Yeah, I'm a JavaScript engineer from uh, Infinum. Uh, it's a independent development and design agency from Croatia. We design cool apps, uh, mobile applications, web applications, and lots and lots more. So this is my team and our huge amount of toys. <laughs> Uh, so, what will you get from this presentation? Uh, I will not give you any code examples on everything. I will just give you basic keywords, what to learn, where to start, uh, what things you should look into it, and just try to make your life easier in, from the beginning. And this is pretty much stuff that I wished I'd known when I started. So, think of this as a house. This is, isn't by priority, it's pretty much the uh, order you sh I think you should start to learn. Think of it as, as, as I said, as a house. We should start as a, with foundations, HTML, responsiveness, uh, design, CSS. Then we add some walls, JavaScript, SAS, or uh, any backend language. Uh, we need to add some windows, version control, task runners, and so on. Add some doors, maybe. Uh, Preprocessor, post-processor, and in the end, we should add a roof, uh, accessibility, and CEO. Another one, an uh, another time, this isn't by priority, it's the way I think you should learn it. Who am I? So I'm, I actually started uh, as, a, as a designer back in college. Uh, I st when I started, we did fixes for Internet Explorer 5. That's a long time ago. Uh, and I have over 100, roughly over 100 projects on my back and pretty much 10 years of development experience in front-end. So the main question is, is front-end for you? So this is how your life is actually going to look like. You should start with HTML, CSS, or your good J JavaScript, or little question mark, and everything after that goes to hell. So let's start with pros and cons. I like to start with cons, so you have a lot to learn. So in the beginning, you need to learn a few things and just don't get discouraged with that. You should have pixel perfect eye, but it, that, that doesn't really matter because you can learn it, but it really takes uh, some time. It doesn't go overnight, come overnight. No one will like you. Be aware of that. So backenders won't like you, designers don't like, wouldn't like you, managers, and so on and so on. You should be aware of cross-browser compatibilities and cross-device comp compatibilities, uh, and lots and lots more. So now, now go, let's go with the pros. Uh, it's really easy to start. Yeah, yes, you have a lot to learn, but the things you need to learn in the beginning, it's really easy. We will go into details later. Uh, you are the middleman. You will sit behind backend developers, QA, uh, project managers, and everyone else. If you're working as a freelancer, you're going to need to do your own QAs. Just be aware of that. A lot of job, job offers, um, a lot of companies will, if you're good, will want to hire you. So uh, recruiters will love you. Your LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile is going to go to hell. I get 10 requests from recruiters every week, so just ignore them. Uh, sales above average in I think in Croatia, yes, they are above average, and here is a link for you later to check it out. Possibilities of side work, uh, we call it FUSH, I think it's called moonlighting. Yeah. And the bosses will love you because everything you uh, create is instantaneously seen on the front end and they can see your progress instantly. And lots and lots more. Okay, let's start with front end. The basic thing you need to learn is HTML. What HTML is, it creates a structure or foundation for your projects, for your website. I don't recommend you start reading from the beginning. Just find a course that is good, with it, that is good and follow through it is going to make your life easier in the beginning. Here are some uh, websites for that and there are lots of more with that. Uh, start small but have a big appetite. Yes. Uh, don't go into huge projects from the start. Just create a small, some small U UI elements, and uh, and after you progress, you uh, when when you go to the actual creating a landing page or a website, that's something totally different. Um, yes, 
be aware of cross browser compatibilities. Uh, website can I use can actually help you with that, where you add a feature that you need and it spills out the statistics of the browsers that you uh, that support that feature. And master the semantics. That's pretty much where everything sits in the code, naming and how everything fits up. In Infinum, we use something called BAM. It's block element modifier and just check that. Okay, now we have the foundations and let's add some color to it, CSS. Okay, what it does is makes your HTML look pretty. So your websites look pretty. And in stuff, HTML, uh, CSS, it's easy. It has a lot of features, but um, it's, they're easy to master and to get to know. But uh, invest a little bit more time in this stuff. Z indexes, positions, floats, animations. Just try to master this and then go further. Um, okay, we have, uh, we have cool design and you go to the toilet, take your phone and it looks horrible. Why? Because you didn't uh, did this, you didn't do this. So what it does is makes your website usable on all devices or, or all screens. Yes, this is not optional. A few years ago, you could actually get away with not, your website not, being able, not uh, being able to see on your uh, mobile device, but today Google will actually penalize you for that uh, over in the search results. Here you should look into media queries, breakpoints, cross-device compatibilities, because not every, uh, you, you can have the uh, same uh, uh, browser on a different mobile, a different device, and it wouldn't look the same. And yes, I hate Internet Explorer and Safari. If everything works, try opening this and pretty much it won't. And just quite a quick note, responsiveness was here from the beginning of the web in the 90s, but we didn't have the tools like media queries to make it usable. Uh, okay, next. Uh, you scale your project a little bit and your code starts to look messy for the CSS. Here, SAS or LAS can actually help you. I prefer SAS. And what it does is makes your CSS code smarter. So it provides you, uh, I think it's the best development, front end development tools ever made. And it provides you with a, a lot of cool features like functions, like extends, uh, variables, uh, partials, loops, conditions. You can actually make do conditions and loops in CSS. And some features like variables are available in the late, uh, latest version of CSS. And a colleague of mine will talk about this in, uh, later on. And quick note, it's not in runtime. You actually need to compile it and serve it to a browser uh, as a regular CSS. Next, a friend of mine said, oh, cool. I heard about this cool thing. It's called CSS frameworks. Does anyone know some cool CSS framework? Okay, I know. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's Bootstrap. I personally hate Bootstrap, but it's a completely different topic. Uh, it provides you with a lot of uh, predefined uh, functionalities and features that you need, don't need to write every single time. So, uh, let's say grids, typography, forms, uh, layouts, and lots and lots more. F uh, frameworks are good, but it's not for every project, just uh, think about it from the beginning and uh, decide if you're going to use it or not. Okay, we have, we did the coding part and let's go to some li little bit different design. As I said, I started with the design and please don't hate your designers. They're uh, not your enemy, they're working with you and they're actually doing your job, their, their jobs as well as you. Here you should look into the user experience, uh, user interfaces. I think it will help. The more uh, skills you have, the more work will you, you're going to get. And learn some tools like, uh, some design tools like Adobe um, Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch, or anything else. Okay, uh, let's go to something completely different now, JavaScript. Yes, everything you learned so far is good, is great. JavaScript, it's not so dif difficult, but it's different from everything you learned until now. Uh, what it does is brings your static layouts to life and lots and lots and lots more. 
just keep that in mind. And if JavaScript is the most powerful uh, backend language ever created in the world, and it doesn't matter what you do, uh, you need to learn it because it will help you a lot. Okay, and as we said in the, in the before, yes, start with the basics. Some, someone is going to get me a boo now, yes. Learn jQuery, uh, I think it will help you a lot in the beginning. Just start with that and go, uh, go further from that. It's really easy, really simple. But after you mastered it, just try to learn how JavaScript actually works, okay? Um, you will see JavaScript, uh, uh, jQuery is actually spoiling us uh, a lot. So I can help you with that with a colleague of mine, he in, from Infinum, we cre uh, he created a, a blog article of everything you need for a JavaScript developer to start. And one other thing, we developed a course, uh, how to build your own jQuery. So you will see it's not so easy as, it thinks, as you think. And this is what is, your life is going to look like when you start JavaScript. Okay? Um, JavaScript is uh, basics. And this thing here uh, is more advanced stuff. I'm not going to go into it, but once, so what it, this does, pretty much everything, when you load, it doesn't load the whole page, it loads only a few sections and so on and so on. I'm not going to go into that. Just here are a few, uh, few uh, major ones like Angular, React, Backbone, Ember, and so on and so on. Okay, now you have everything that you need to make your web. But it, that isn't enough. You need, you have, okay, and, sorry, that isn't enough. You need uh, something more. Uh, here, once you go, once your project goes from a little stage to a little bigger project, you will have a lot of files, a lot of stuff, a lot of assets, and you need to manage that. So build tools, roughly, it makes your project assets uh, easier to manage. It, it does a lot more, but this is a rough estimate. Uh, we prefer Webpack 2 for a build tool and PostCSS. PostCSS is not a big, big build tool, but it kind of fits here. And um, we can talk about that later if anyone uh, wants to know what it is. Uh, build tools, what, it do, what they die, do uh, is they speed up your development. They minimize, it minimizes your code, compiles SAS or LAS. As I said in the before, SAS or LAS needs to be recompiled. It, this does that. Uh, checks for errors, linting, auto prefixes your code, and lots and lots more. Just uh, look into that. Uh, okay, now you add a colleague of yours to your project, and you have a lot of collisions in your work. Here, version control can actually help you, uh, among other things. So what it does is makes uh, is manages your changes in your code over time. So um, let's say I created a feature and I want to go back, and I say I don't like it, and I want to go to the version of my code two months ago. In this, you can actually do it. Just go to the version that the commit that was that version that you need and. That's it, it's, everything is back like it was. Uh, I prefer Git, and pretty much if you go to any um, job interview, they will ask you, did you do anything with version control? If you say no, they will give you the mean eye, because you need to learn that. <laughs> okay, you go to production, everything looks great, and you want to earn a million dollars from your clients, and no one is coming to your website, why? because you didn't optimize it for the search engines. So CEO is search engine, uh, so short for search engine optimization. What it does, it, uh, it helps you position your website on search engines. Here, you should look into a lot of stuff like H tags, site title, meta ta uh, tags, Facebook open graph, uh, text quality, Google rich snippets, mobile design, 
Google page speed, page rank, and so and lots and lots more. As you see, there is a lot of this. <laughs> um, so just check it out <laughs> because you won't get any visitors if you don't do this stuff. Okay, let's say you have um, you have uh, visitors that have some kind of disabilities. Why don't we help them? Yes, uh, we can help them. There is a standard for that. Uh, this, and you can go there and check uh, how um, check recommendations for every uh, every categories of disabilities and optimize your website. Accessibility is like a blueberry muffin. You can't push it, push the berries uh, at the end. This also applies to CEO. You need to do it from the first uh, line of code in the HTML that you do. Okay, and this is pretty much everything I want to. Uh, I, I wish you known from the how to code, and I want to give you some advices from my. Uh, years of experience. Okay, what I learned. Start creating. Uh, how I started in the uh, front end. So back in college, I didn't have any job. I didn't have uh, job opportunities because I didn't know anything. Yeah, let's face it. And I didn't sit at home. I found a website that I didn't like, uh, but uh, as with the design, but I liked uh, the Content. Yes, it's not porn sites, it's the content site. <laughs> uh, and uh, I said, why could I make any, something better? And yes, I took the content and created the design, the code, and everything. And I, that's how I gained my experience. If you're good, you can maybe sell that, try to sell that to the website that you created. So maybe they say, oh, it's better than ours. So maybe they'll give you a job or not. It's, you don't know. Uh, and if you don't know what to do, if you have no idea, just try to make your own portfolio. I have 40 different versions of my portfolio in the archive. Yeah. Next, write good and reusable code. Think of this as the next guy that is coming to your project is a serial killer. Uh, he, if your code is bad, he will murder you and he knows where you live. So yeah, <laughs> just try to write good code from the beginning. Plan your project. Yes, you need to plan your project from the start. Don't go in blind. Uh, do a, a plan where everything is going to work what features are you going to use, when, and how you're going to develop that. Be product, uh, proactive, be curious, it speaks for itself. Invest in your skills. As I said, more skills you have, more possibilities of work you're going to get. Don't say no or yes to everything. This applies when you go to the, when you speak to a client or you, go to, you start to work as a bigger company. You'll have a lot of problems. You can actually get fired over that. Just try to stay something in, uh, somewhere in the middle because, yes, you can make everything, but yeah, just have some balance to it. Find a mentor. It's a guy, okay, a girl, it doesn't really matter. Uh, oops. Well, this bad. Okay. Find a mentor. Uh, it's a person that's going to help you uh, avoid some common uh, pitfalls in your code uh, once you start it. Uh, and just he's going to help you a lot in the beginning. Take a break. If you, fi if you find yourself stuck at some feature, a sub problem, just walk away from the keyboard, go take a walk, go sleep it off. Next day it's going to be easier because try to uh, clear your head is going to help you a lot. Learn some backend language. Uh, yes, more skills for you, and you'll, it will help you understand the, uh, your colleagues and what are their problems and restrictions, and just it will help you. Create your portfolio. If you're a front-ender, everyone is going to ask you for your portfolio, what you did in the past, 
when you go to the job interview. So, uh, okay. Contribute to open source projects. Go to workshops and meetups like this one and take your time. Don't, uh, don't code uh, and do hacks because you don't have time and let you say, okay, I will do this, do this hack here and go fix it later. You won't. You will leave it like that and from the first slide, the serial killer is going to find you. <laughs> Just try to do it good in the first time. Create a GitHub profile and always ask questions. So don't be afraid to ask anyone any questions. This is what uh, forums are for, for uh, Stack Overflow and anyone in, in the conference also. I can help you with some helpful resources. Uh, this is a link from a uh, GitHub profile from a, a guy that he actually created a huge amount of links and stuff for you to learn. Just go check it out. GitHub, Vetri Schools, why is it crossed? I actually don't recommend you use Vetri Schools. It's full of uh, mis uh, wrong information. Just go to the source, use MDN, okay? Uh, Smashing Magazine, CSS tricks, or apply, it, and you can actually apply to our Infinum's newsletter. We send cool front-end stuff every week. And to rec wrap everything up, just invest in your future. Uh, what you start today is going to pay you big time in the long run. As, as you said, there are a lot of cool stuff. And think of this as a marathon, not a sprint. Thank you. OK, so the first question, uh, how much knowledge do, do you need to have? It's all, it depends on the project. It depends on you. So you, you, uh, for the frameworks, you need, you need to learn the basics, how everything is working, and how, how the, the basics for JavaScript are working before you go to the frameworks that are really a higher level of JavaScript. Uh, I recommend you do the learn query and try to f fiddle with some frameworks, and we can actually talk about that later. And another question is, I'm sorry. What are the advantages of being a designer and front-end developer in one person or versus collaborating with them? Okay, yes. Uh, as I said, I started as a, de as a designer and went to the front-end uh, section, as a front-end business. Um, it brings you a lot of uh, cool advantages because I was able to create a design and code it. And as I learned the backend language, I learned PHP so I can make a backend, a backend part of the project. I actually uh, do a lot of WordPress project so I can make everything from the ground up to the finished product for my client as I work as a freelancer. When you go to the bigger uh, to the company, if the company is small, you are probably going to do need to do a little bit of design or front end in the process. But if the company is bigger and they have a, a specific uh, department for design, I actually now today I only do front end stuff and JavaScript. So front end and JavaScript part. So I think <laughs> is that your answer? <laughs> I mean, I was wondering if there are some disadvantages of being uh, the same person, like... Oh, disadvantages. It's challenging to work with a designer, okay. or if you make your own design. Uh, okay, yes. It, in the learning curve, in the learning process, you need to learn a, a few, uh, two different things at the same time, and design is not for everyone. So. The, not everyone has an eye for aesthetics on, on design and everything. So, yes, uh, it, it's good to know, but if you, if you want to be a coder, um, con um, focus your efforts to the coding section. If you want to be a designer, do the design. But it's good to know something from each section, each uh, department, for it. it will help you. <laughs> you said that maybe CSS frameworks aren't for you. 
why is that? Uh, shouldn't CSS frameworks help you build your user interfaces a lot faster? Yes, it actually does. So uh, CSS frameworks, I recommend CSS frameworks for uh, doing a quick prototypes or your, of your web pages. So just to build something to see is everything going to work. But for the bigger project, uh, if you're going to override, uh, if you're going to do some custom stuff uh, with the framework, you will need to uh, override a lot of things. And it's, is, that will just add up to your code and amount of code you have. So yes, it's, it's good, but eh, I don't like it. I, I, want, I want to do the co everything from the ground up, and I know how everything is going to work, and I'm sure that nothing is going to break because some third party stuff. But yes, you are sure with that because they invested a lot of time in t checking how everything is working on a different browsers and so on and so on. So op uh, if open uh, a CSS framework and uh, check how everything is set up and you can actually learn a lot from that. 